in your previous grade, you got introduced to irrational numbers and their many attributes. You learnt that real numbers consist of both rational numbers and irrational numbers. You already know irrationals are represented on the number line. What you don't know, is how to prove that such numbers are irrational numbers. In this video, we will prove that root p is irrational, where p is a prime. Hence, p can take any of the values like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. One of the theorems, we will use in our proof, is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, that which we have mastered in the previous lectures. Let us first learn about the technique known as proof by contradiction, that we will be using alongside this theorem. In mathematics, a contradiction occurs, when we get a statement s, such that s is true and not s, which is its very own negation, is also true. How does proof by contradiction work? Suppose we want to establish the truth of a statement s. So, we begin by assuming the opposite statement to be true, that is, we assume that the negation of s is true. We then proceed by making a series of logical deductions, based on the truthfulness of the negation of s. If this leads to a contradiction, then the contradiction arises because of our faulty assumption that s is not true. Suppose we are given the following. All teachers are women. B is a teacher. Prove that B is a woman. Even though this is a very easy to understand example, let us see how we can prove this by contradiction. Here, we have to establish the truth of the statement S, B is a woman. So then assume that, B is not a woman. That is the negation of statement S to be true. Since B is not a woman, but B is a teacher which is a true information that we can't deny, we have a counterexample to the statement all teachers are women. Hence, it is false that all teachers are women. Now we have a contradiction, since we have shown that the statement all teachers are women, which is a true information we have beforehand, and its negation, not all teachers are women are both true at the same time. This contradiction arose, because we assumed that B is not a woman. Hence, we can conclude that our assumption was wrong. Thus, by proof of contradiction, we have proved that B is a woman. Now, let us go back to the definition of the fundamental theorem to derive and prove one very important theorem that will be extensively used in establishing irrationalities of numbers. Let P be a prime number. If P divides A squared, then P divides A, where A is a positive integer. Now let us prove this theorem. From unique prime factorization of fundamental theorem. Given a positive integer A, there can be only one factorization for A as P1 times P2 times so on till Pn minus 1 times Pn, where P1, P2, P3 and so on till Pn are primes, such that, P1 less than or equal to P2 less than or equal to P3 and so on till Pn minus 1 less than or equal to Pn, which means that not all of these primes are necessarily distinct. So, I squared will be equal to, P1 times P2 times and so on times Pn, times, P1 times P2 times and so on times Pn, equals P1 squared times P2 squared times so on to Pn squared. Now, we are given that a prime number P divides A squared. Therefore, from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it follows that P must be one of the prime factors of A squared. However, from the uniqueness part of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we realize that the only prime factors of A squared are P1, P2 and so on till Pn. So, P is one of P1, P2 and so on till Pn. Now, since A equals P1 times P2 and so on times Pn, P divides A. Hence, proved. Please pause the video, rewind and play again to absorb what has been covered in the topic. Let us proceed now. We are ready to prove the irrationality of numbers for which we will make use of the recently learned proof by contradiction method, in addition to the derived form of fundamental theorem, to arrive at the irrationality of the numbers. Prove that square root of a prime number p is irrational. To begin, let us assume on the contrary, square root of prime number p is rational. This implies that square root of p can be represented in the form r by q where r and q are integers and q is non-zero. 
if r and q have a factor in common other than 1, r by q gets reduced to a by b where a and b are co-primes. Squaring both sides, we get, p is equal to a squared by b squared. Rearranging the equation, we get, p times b squared equals a squared. This implies that p is a factor of a squared and so p divides a squared. Now, we already know, if a prime number divides the square of a number, the same prime number divides the number too. So, this implies p also divides a. So, we can write a equals p times c for some integer c. Substituting for a, we get p times b squared equals p squared times c squared, that is, b squared is p times c squared. This means that p divides b squared, and so p divides b just as p divides a. Therefore, a and b have at least p as a common factor. Now this contradicts the fact that a and b are co-primes due to which they can't have a common factor other than 1. This contradiction has resulted because of our incorrect assumption that square root of p is rational. So, by proof of contradiction, we conclude that square root of a prime number p is irrational. We can even use this result as a theorem going forward. We can prove that the sum or difference of a rational and an irrational number is irrational. And the product and quotient of a non-zero rational and irrational number is irrational. Let us look at few such examples. Prove that 3 minus square root 2 is irrational. Let us assume, to the contrary, that 3 minus square root 2 is rational. That is, we can find co-prime integers a and b, b is not equal to 0, such that 3 minus square root 2 is equal to a by b. Which implies 3 minus a by b equals square root 2. Rearranging the equation, we get, square root of 2 equals 3b minus a by b. Since a and b are integers, we get 3b minus a by b is rational, and hence square root of 2 is rational. But this contradicts the fact. That square root of 2 is irrational, since we already know that square root of a prime number is always irrational. Hence, our assumption that 3 minus square root of 2 is rational is incorrect. So, we can conclude that 3 minus square root of 2 is irrational. Prove that 5 root 3 is irrational. Let us assume, to the contrary, that 5 root 3 is rational. That is, we can find co-prime integers a and b, b is not equal to 0, such that 5 times square root of 3 is equal to a by b. Rearranging the equation, we get, square root of 3 equals a by 5 times b. Since 5, a and b are integers, we get a by 5 times b is rational, and hence square root of 3 is rational. But this contradicts the fact, that square root of 3 is irrational. Since we already know that square root of a prime number is always irrational. Hence, our assumption that 5 root 3 is rational is incorrect. So, we can conclude that 5 root 3 is irrational. Please pause the video, rewind and play again to absorb what has been covered in the topic. Let us proceed now.